Ça était. Of October. <laughs> 2023. I'm going to be your host tonight, Dana Durnford. Everybody's had a great day. And uh, today's Thanksgiving Day here in oh, crappy Canada. We done a poll a little while back. Should it be criminal for the International Atomic Energy Agency to claim Fukushima never released anything, only 2.2 grams of tritium? Uh, there's four buildings, eight fuel pools that melted down. Take you through some headlines f uh, from the time machine and take you through some headlines from the last couple of days. Fukushima children not growing in weight. The average increase is down 75%. Fukushima, they're talking about uh, millions of people in this prefecture. And some of the children only gained one pound in a year. This is a major nuclear meltdown. This story is just so heartbreaking. It's hard to imagine something more frightening than five-year-olds marching off to irradiated school playgrounds with Geiger counters strapped to their necks. It was 90,000 children and pregnant women were given Geiger, they weren't even Geiger counters, they're dosimeters. And the difference is you can't read the dosimeter. These types had to be sent to the universities so the nuclear students can study the little lab rats. How come students are building robots instead of Yale or Stanford or Oxford or MIT or Harvard or any of the major shakers and movers or, or the military or the governments? Why are students building it? because they just don't care about you. Radiation forecast withheld by the government, releasing it will cause unnecessary panic. Well, the reason you have around 100 to 150 sirens around a typical nuclear power plant is so you can panic. The ministry decided that such data would be unavailable. You paid for it. You hired these people. You gave them the monetary, the education, the equipment. So if you ever had a vent, which is a very rare occurrence for a major event, then you were had an ability to make informed decisions. So they decided that they wouldn't keep their job in the government, so they shouldn't tell you or the communities or the cities. Prime Minister contemplated evacuating 30 million from Tokyo, and they didn't because of fear of mass panic and chaos. So it's better to let everybody be poisoned than everybody panic, is it? I can't reconcile how these people are able to get away with this kind of atrocious betrayal. Japan professor, leaders of Fukushima City refused to evacuate the population of 400,000 after being asked by the government. The media didn't report this thinking it would cause panic. You seen any trends here? Is that just me, I wonder? Expert, government officials very possibly knew Fukushima is a worldwide disaster. They can't neglect the truth because they fear a panic outbreak, which is exactly what they've done. And the people are panicking because there isn't a panic. There should have been a panic. Radiation forecast in Japan kept secret to avoid panic in the whole of society. So they cut your throat They cut your throat so they can pretend that they're humans. Does that make any sense to anybody? Did you, you know, did Japan hire these people to hide the truth? You know, they picked up uh, 30 to 60 million one-ton bags. 
th well, 30 million one-ton bags do you admit to? And if you put a one-ton bag in the back of a pickup truck, and the pickup trucks are bumper to bumper, that's five rows of traffic, bumper to bumper around the entire planet. Five rows of traffic, bumper to bumper. The official story now is only 2.2 grams got out of the reactors. And that each year they're gonna release, now that kind is one gram. Did you see the buildings? Of course you did, I showed it to you a few minutes ago. And what do you say they're gonna release? Because they're saying nothing got out of the four, this is only two of them, nothing got out of the four melted reactors. Destroyed, missing is the better word for it. Missing because the plumes covered the entire planet in just a short period of time. And if they're growing food, right alongside a one-ton bags of radiation in the nuclear wasteland, the abandoned area itself. And they're surrounded by 14 prefectures that are considered nuclear wastelands by 55 countries. Japan official says delay in raising Fukushima to a level seven was because we could have triggered a panicked reaction. And so rather than cause a panic reaction, they wait for everybody to get, uh, how would you put it, get sick and die. And then they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. So the fact that they picked up 31 million ton uh, one-ton bags of radiation meant that people should have panicked, shouldn't they? And shouldn't, and it's not, it's never too late for these types of crime rules, uh, crimes to be held accountable. These, these are crimes against humanity on a scale we've never seen before. Photographer in Fukushima, it's a panic there. There's no way to escape as the gas stations are closed, the rescuers are all gone. It's a panic. And they had every right to panic. Every time you see these black bags, each one of them is a ton of radiation fallout. TEPCO confirms steam coming up from underground. Uh, number one is 4.7 sieverts. Three sieverts is considered a lethal dose. And that's 20% more than in June 2011. Fukushima, before Fukushima, 100 becquerels a kilogram of cesium. And, and it's hard to comprehend it with the amount of lies this despicable industry is told. But cesium is just one of a thousand fission products that are going to be in the same sample. And that the whole nuclear industry had to participate in that lie for that to work. All the universities, all the medias worldwide had to participate in that lie and hide all of this for that to work. And the justification is the fact you picked up 30 million one-ton bags, which meant you should have abandoned at least half your country. Staying there is not an option. My goodness, I'm heartbroken. Fukushima is the most serious man-made disaster in human history. Uh, flash ahead to 2023, and they're saying only 2.2 grams. This is a professor's. This is International Atomic Energy Agencies. This is the regulatory agencies, the nuclear regulatory commissions, all saying the same story as of, and coordinated as of July the 13th, 2023. Now, Fukushima's most serious man-made disaster in human history, obesity rates doubled in Japan. Excessive weight gain after nuclear crisis is a mark of radiation brain damage. And so what Japan done was they kept growing food in nuclear wasteland, 55 countries banned it, and Canada removed all restrictions after 93 days. And so if you look at Canada right now, obesity, it's very difficult to find anybody that's not obese. At best, it's maybe 10% of the population is now not obese. The rest of everybody is obese. And for comparisons, if you go to 
Australia, go to Russia, it's very difficult to see anybody obese. But Japan couldn't ship their food anywhere, only to Canada. Now can everybody in Canada is sick and has brain damage from radioactive poisoning. Radi radiation forecast can by no means be released to the public. Showed a radioactive cloud could spread over Tokyo. I mean, they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. They had 105,000 sites like this. So people should have panicked. People should have been evacuated. Tokyo should have been abandoned. The water filtration facilities are so contaminated. All the way to, say, to Tokyo, that they can't get rid of the sediment from the filtration, water filtration. They can't get rid of the sewage because it's so radioactive. And the numbers we're talking about are stunning. They can't get rid of the ash from the incinerators because the numbers are stunning. They can't drink the tea because the tea, bit, tea leaves are so radioactive. It's like Russian, probably one of the most terrifying headlines imaginable. Only 10% of the school lunches in Fukushima were tested for radiation. 10%. Officials didn't even know testing equipment was available. This is a coordinated attack upon humanity and the 8 million species. Fukushima farmers hope that ducks will eat up the radiation. Ducks. The disconnect is surreal. Remember, they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. Government models showed Fukushima radioactive gas near Tokyo, way past Tokyo, skyrocketed to 10 billion times normal. There, by the way, there is no such thing as a normal. Very high concentration recorded at all monitoring posts in the Northern Hemisphere. And when you think about how much they actually picked up, it's not hard to comprehend it, I hope. Just 0.8% of children in 2001, the Japanese control group had thyroid tumors, and now it's 36%. It was um, 13,646 out of 38,000 children they tested, which was 35.6%. And when scaled up, that's 356,000 out of a million. And the tumors we're talking about are two centimeters. And you're like, well, that's not too big, Dana. The thyroid gland is two, three centimeters by five centimeters, so it is big. So 13,000, there you are right there, 13,646 out of 38,000. A pre-Fukushima was one in a million. Was one in a million. Play the clip at some point, hopefully. But there's clear evidence rates have risen. Before the disaster in 2011, the rate of thyroid cancer was between one and two cases in every million children. And now it's 35.8%. And it's not hard to comprehend why it's that high of a number. They picked up 30 million one-ton bags, and Al Jazeera is reporting 60 million. The censorship to cover up what they've done is just as evil. 12 million yen to censor Twitter being spent by the city just burning radioactive debris. 12, and we're not talking about the 30 million one-ton bags that they picked up either. Up to 2,000 grains of radioactive pollen inhaled in a cubic meter of air in Tokyo. Tokyo is severely contaminated. They can't, they can't get rid of your sediment from your water filtration. You need to run. That means you run away, you don't look back. 
insurance person told me people from Fukushima may not be able to get life insurance, especially cancer insurance. It's not hard to comprehend why. Like the world can deny the truth, but that's a that's a catastrophic mistake. Local official and the trick. It's better for you to leave Fukushima because brain neurons don't regenerate. They don't regenerate. And if you're in the nuclear wasteland, which is Japan, guess what's not going to happen? Nuclear scientists, Fukushima is an apocalyptic disaster that will haunt future generations. And that the world now is an experimental lab with humans as guinea pigs. Yeah, so they go into these communities, they pick up one ton bags, you know, not academics or nuclear scientists or anything like that, but the homeless, the destitute, the victims of society, the immigrants who don't speak the language. Not nuclear students or nuclear universities or nuclear corporations but victims of society. You can't clean up a community by picking up one ton bags of topsoil, radioactive topsoil. Scientific conference. Fukushima is a global threat to the human health. Radioactivity in the food web off the Pacific Northwest to significantly increase after one year. Salmon forecast exceed Japan's radiation limits. Major concerns for coastal communities. And the, and the official story as of this year, of July the 13th, and it came, original story came out from a professor of nuclear and quantum engineering in South Korea and is now recited everywhere worldwide, worldwide. Imagine a uh, nuclear science, a nuclear, a professor of nuclear and quantum engineering coming out and claiming, from, and a university supporting them in South Korea, saying only 2.2 grams is all that got out of Japan. Radioactivity of 14,600 beckles. Think of physical atoms in rice paddy soil far from Fukushima. And the crops will be sold in Japan that year. Concerned half of Japan to be covered in nuclear waste. Half of Japan to be covered in nuclear waste. 60 and older should be prepared to die at the Fukushima disease factories. And fire was out of control at number four. Well, now we know reactor three and four were completely leveled, completely leveled. And what you've done was pretend that it wasn't. What do you think you're going to do the next time there's an accident? Or I shouldn't call them accidents. You've got to call them events because they're so catastrophic. TEPCO says, send us people who don't mind dying to the temporary work agencies. That's reactor three uh, detonating and tossing out the fuel pools, which could have had up to 10 reactor cores or more, and the reactor core, which was a mixed oxide fuel reactor core. The evidence is they picked up 30 million one ton bags. Did I mention that? Does that even matter? Does the truth matter? Can you imagine how many views I would get every day if I'd done a show and told the nuclear lies? I'd be a superstar, wouldn't I? There'd be all kinds of interviews, there'd be endless donations. Japan would be flying me in all the time to promote their disease factories. And how can anybody, and there's a lot of people that does that, I, I don't comprehend the disconnect that it takes to do something like that. I can't comprehend it. Report, Tokyo Vice Governor suggested the Fukushima draft. All of Japan must face it. Well, shouldn't we start with all the nuclear specialists worldwide, all of the nuclear alumni, nuclear academics? Shouldn't they be the first? They're in the know. They know what's up. 
Every organism in Fukushima Prefecture is contaminated with radiation. 1.4 million becquels a kilogram for the excrement from worms. This is something I've, I have no literature from history that shows anything compared to anything I showed you so far. Hot terms, hot zones used to describe Miyagi, Iwati, Tachigi prefectures, not just Fukushima prefectures, hot zones. Like, people didn't run away and leave their livelihoods, their supermarkets, their schools, their homes, their graveyards, their pits, their banks, their cars, lots, their malls behind, their hospitals, their elderly. Behind because it's like a banana. Reactor not repaired at all. With one more quake, Japan will cease to exist. And the resulting destruction will take the half the planet with it. And what they meant by that was that the radioactive fallout is so prolific. is so prolific. So this is the follow after 26 days from the tsunami, 20 days from the last reactor detonating. And at the top of these buildings, that's, that's what the building behind it that blew up reactor three would have looked like. It's 190 feet tall, it's a 19 story, 65 meter building. And so when you look at this, and then you listen to the official story from July the 13th from Young Jong Il, a professor at the Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering in South Korea, say that it was equal to 2.2 grams of tritium is all that got out of that. And it's equal to three cubes of sugar You should be worried sick. You should be literally worried sick to your guts that a university and a professor backed up by the university and the, and the media and the governments and then the International Atomic Energy Agency regurgitated now repeatedly the same exact narrative. That doesn't concern you. You are in for a terrible awakening in the future. Your loved ones, as they get sick, you'll regret not making a stand, I can assure you. Top Japan official, let the elderly people hurry up and die. This was the person in charge of Fukushima's victims. Japan government, if that's what you want to call it, drastically reduced allowable levels of radiation in food by April 2012. So at that point, it was 500 becquels. So what happened when they had the nuclear meltdowns? Europe raised their limits to 1,200 becquels a kilogram. Uh, United States raised theirs to 1,000 becquels a kilogram. Japan raised theirs to 500 becquels a kilogram. So before Fukushima, the limit was 0 0.1 becquel a kilogram. And then they did, they don't check. They're only talking about cesium, which means they're not, they're the furthest thing from being honest conceivable. They're complete opposite of honesty. Radiation and health specialists, children with 11 becquels a kilogram of cesium. And every time I heard the word cesium, uh, my contempt for the nuclear industry and academics is really something special. I have, I'll, it's absurd my contempt for these people when I see stuff like this. 30 million one ton bags, how do you avoid 11 becquels a kilogram, see? They're shipping billions of pounds a year out of the nuclear wasteland that they have the audacity to call a no-go zone. One million becquels a kilogram of cesium detected at a school after decontamination. So you're supposed to abandon the school. What they done was they put 
3,000 Geiger counters just in one town alone in order to convince them that when they're driving past millions of bags every day to drop their kids off to the nuclear wasteland school, that it, it was somehow magically safe. And if you look at what they've done to Koryama, Koryama schools, like every house in Fukushima City was entitled to be decontaminated, and every house in Koryama City, which is equal population, was entitled to be decontaminated. You can't decontaminate a house. It can't be done. Like when you're talking about every house, it means you abandon that permanently. And the nuclear industry had hoodwinked you for so long, they just said nothing got out, only 2.2 grams, and then nothing else mattered. Only their, their law, eh, that's all that mattered. Typhoon Kong could slam straight into a nuclear power plant in Taiwan. Category 4, this is a today or yesterday or day before headline. A wind gust of 212 miles per hour on Orchard Island. And Orchard Island is an island where they moved all the natives from Taiwan. And so eventually they got nuclear power and they, they needed a spot to put their nuclear waste. And they said, well, Orchard Island is really far away from us. There's only the natives, so let's put it there. So they devised a plan to get it there and get an agreement. Because once you sign the agreement, then it's too late, despite the fact of the horrific deception they used to pull it off. So what they told the natives in Orchard Island was that they wanted to build a canning factory for salmon and tuna and other species. And the natives thought it was a great idea. They were going to get a stip in, uh, like a little kickback for everybody in the community each month. Pretty good deal, right, they thought, for a canning factory. Uh, it turns out it was a nuclear dump. And when the natives found out, the nuclear industry, that's too bad. You signed the agreement. And they've been fighting in court for decades. And they'll never win. The storm sustained winds of 130 miles per hour, which is equivalent to Category 4. And it's expected to pass directly over Taiwan's last active nuclear disease factory. These are huge storms, my goodness. And what you're seeing is post-Fukushima, these storms are prevalent. At 342 kilometers an hour at a nuclear dump called Orchard Island. I'm going to play a little clip. I forgot to grab my water. It's just outside my door there, but let me play a little short 30 second or so clip. This one is about Castle Bravo in the Bikini Atolls. And what you're going to find out is over 5,000 square miles a fallout would have been a lethal dose. The whole picture of fallout contamination becomes of increasing importance with high yield weapons. In one program, drone ships were sent into fallout areas to evaluate the worth of a washdown system for ship decontamination. We found we could measure fallout even in large ocean areas by making aerial surveys using extremely sensitive radiation detection equipment and with surface crafts such as tugs and destroyers. As a result of these measurements, we were able to document for the first time fallout data from high yield detonations. It is now known that fallout from the larger castle shots blanketed areas of more than 5,000 square miles with radioactive material that would have been lethal to unprotected personnel. This one result gives a new insight into a method for using high yield weapons in both strategic and tactical situations. 
5,000 square miles of lethal dose. It's over a million square kilometers. It's still too radioactive to be habitable decades later. And they destroyed all these beautiful paradises. These were paradises, tropical paradises. Um, they done the same thing to Christmas Island, the, the British. The France done the same thing to the French Polynesians. The French Polynesian islands got so much radiation for for, it was equal to a Nagasaki bomb every week for 12 years of radioactive fallout. The British went to Australia, waited for the wind to blow across Australia before they set off their nuclear weapons. You might think I'm kidding, but I'm actually not. And even today, Montebello, which is another beautiful apparent uh, paradise of atolls and tropical islands is still too radioactive to be inhabitable. And, and Montebello, Mar Mar Maralinga, and a few other places, the numbers are still just shocking, radioactive fallout today. They ruined all the tropical paradises they can get their hands on. Streamers do live shows on the streets, and the government has grown tired of him. Japan is the favorite destination for streamers to do live shows on the streets. It's this nuclear wasteland. Why would you go to that despicable, disgusting country for it? This revolting, parasite, mass genocide country for it. You know, like... It's not hard to, to understand the stuff I'm showing people. And it's actually not that hard to find it if you actually try. And so it's difficult to comprehend why nobody's talking about it. It's heartbreaking, actually. It tears me apart every day. Content creators tend, and these are not content creators. These are morons. These are actually morons we're talking about. Arriving from different parts of the world, and Japan encourages it, see? They want stupid people to come to their countries and promote their disease factories. This formula seems seemingly so irresistible and made the presence of streamers, YouTubers, and TikTokers something common on the streets of some cities. And although an army of teenagers has yet, not yet been seen camping out to make videos like in China, certain activities in bad taste seems to be trying the patience of the authorities who have spoken out on the matter. Recently, Japan's cabinet secretary, Masuno, made a strong statement about the content creators that fill some parts of the country. Of course, we must guarantee the freedom of YouTubers' users. I'm, I'm barred from live streaming on YouTube, not by YouTube, but by Japan's hackers. But the people they're talking about are idiots promoting the nuclear wasteland itself, see? How can you go somewhere where there's 30 million one-ton bags of radiation? And we got lots of these so-called urban explorers that'll drive right past cities, go into the ghost towns, no masks on or nothing. And recently, this year, we covered a rather interesting one where you had urban explorers go into Akuma, which is right alongside of the nu ongoing nuclear meltdowns. And in 2019, they were there also, and, and they got videos on their website of the hospital, where there's around 90 dementia patients were left behind, the majority of who died um, just in the, the couple of days following the nuclear event, the meltdown event. And 
the hospital in 2019 was full of the operating theaters, all the all the um, MRI machines, everything else, you know, billion plus dollars of equipment. When they went back this year, all of it's gone. And so that radioactive, a billion dollars worth of radioactive hospital equipment is out there murdering people for many years to come. Of course, we must guarantee the freedom of YouTube users, except for Dana Durnford, of course. So this uh, guy, his nickname is Johnny Somali, a 23-year-old broadcasting his trip. And what he was doing, he, he was harassing people on the streets of Japan. And he finally went in to a construction site where he was yelling, Fukushima, Fukushima. And his, name, his real name is uh, Ramsey Khalid Ismail. At the moment, he was arrested on a construction site yelling. Uh, and it doesn't even make any sense. He broke into a construction site and he's yelling, Fukushima, Fukushima, Fukushima. He started shouting, Fukushima, such behavior resulted in a charge of criminal trespass. Japan has a law where they can hold you for 30 days with no charges. So Japan, again, is paying people to move into the nuclear wasteland, migrating the Santo City to Chigi Prefecture and other prefectures. These are nuclear wastelands we're talking about. Nearly 40% of the people are interested in relocating from the city to a rural area and popular prefectures, which are majority like Nagano and Yamanashi and Guma, for instance, are notorious nuclear wastelands. With many people thinking of relocating, different towns have introduced perks, perks to attract them. Households that relocate to one of the Yamagata prefectures, 30 municipalities, will receive a year's worth of rice, which that's in Fukushima prefecture, by the way, and it's not that far from the nuclear meltdowns, will receive a year's worth of rice. <laughs> in Yamagata uh, prefecture, And you can see Yamagata up there. There's Fukushima City, uh, NAMI, Fukushima nuclear meltdown is around right here. And Yamagata, um, scale is 10 miles. You can see we're right behind me in the bottom right-hand corner. That whole, all those communities are nuclear wastelands, every one of them. Fukushima, it's in Fukushima Prefecture will provide up to 2 million yen to households who move to one of his 12 abandoned municipalities, which is 18,000 Canadian dollars, to move your loved ones into a nuclear wasteland. But it's frightening that they're going to give people a year's worth of rice in a nuclear wasteland from a nuclear wasteland. It's just... It's, when I seen that, I was my God. I had to stop and take a break because I was heartbroken. My throat's a little scratchy. My apologies. I've been sick since last week with the flu. I haven't had the flu in like a decade. And so I guess I shouldn't complain. 2 million yen to households in Tachiki Prefecture, which again is the nuclear wasteland. Everything north of Tokyo and quite a long way south of Tokyo is a nuclear wasteland. The food was banned from 14 prefectures. And Tokyo is one of them. 
And rightfully so. Um, in the first year, there was 865,000 extra cancers. But the prefectures that they're trying to move people back into are ground zero. This nuclear byproduct is fueling debate over Fukushima seafood. And so what, um, I left them a comment, but they blocked me. Is disposing water from Fukushima nuclear plant into the ocean safe for marine life? Scientists claims it's complicated. Well, it's, there's nothing complicated about the truth. October the 5th was my birthday. Japan started dumping, pumping more water. And they said, held at the facility for the past 12 years. Do you tell them, do you, anybody, I don't know anybody that's here regularly knows the difference, obviously. And when you look at these two buildings, what's the chance to contain anything when there's nothing left? And what you're seeing there are stumps. Those stumps should have been razed right to the ground. There's nothing functional whatsoever. Over the following two and a half weeks, Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, which has no right to be on the site ever again. They're not a decommissioned authority. It's so far-fetched. Now, the idea is you'll yell at TEPCO if the truth comes out instead of the nuclear industry, which is who you're supposed to blame. 40% of the Japanese public opposed it and has sparked a backlash from ecological activists, fishermen, South Korean citizens, Chinese government, who fear the tritium will harm the Pacific ecosystem and contaminate its seafood. Globally, scientists argue there's no cause for your concern. The doses of radiation really are incredibly low, says you guessed it, Jim Smith, environmental scientist, actually a real life monster, from a university that shouldn't exist anymore. The world should be trying to close that university down. There should be a million people down there protesting that university existence. And that the academics and administrations and the deans of that institution should be jailed for 10,000 years. And so for Jim Smith, who we've covered hundreds and hundreds of times in the last few years, and that university, the University of Portsmouth in the United Kingdom, says less than a dental x-ray. But what they're doing is they're completely dishonest. They're claiming nothing got out of there on tritium. And how can the world still sit in silence why these crimes are perpetrated against yourselves, your friends, your families, your loved ones, the species, hum the future of humanity is now compromised because it is. It's so evil that there's no words will do it justice, not even Machiavellian can do it justice. Smith vouches vouches for the water releases safety. He vouches that nothing got out of that building is what he's doing. He should be taken down and thrown into the building, shouldn't he? That would be justice. And then his family too. The International Atomic Energy Agency endorsed TEPCO's 2.2 grams of tritium story. Two point, what they're going to release, they said, is 0 0.062 grams a year, which is equal to splitting this few flakes of salt 22 times. And each year, only one of them is released into the environment, and it's only tritium. And I showed you a bunch of headlines earlier. Did you notice tritium was never mentioned in any of them? Nuclear war inspired peacetime gamma gardens. We've covered that a few years ago, right? 
where they were putting radiation in the garden. This is how insane the industry was. This is like the 60s now. Gamma gardens, where they have radioactive mutated food. And because they have never been held accountable, there's never been any incentive not to be evil, then they have become the very persona of evil. And by proxy, the biggest threat to the eight million species in the future of Earth is now compromised a billion percent. TEPCO started frantically shutting water into the six reactors to stop them from overheating and causing an even greater catastrophe. Well, actually, they didn't. They didn't stop the catastrophe. You don't need any more than that picture to really comprehend it. And the sad and pathetic and demoralizing fact is you won't find this picture anywhere only on my site. No one's going to show it to you and explain it to you. And the ones that should are too fucking lazy to try. TEPCO and the Japanese government, which I'm talking about, like Greenpeace and Beyond Nuclear, TEPCO and the Japanese government says that if Fukushima Daiichi is ever to be decommissioned, the water will have to go elsewhere. But the water is, the tanks is the cover story. The tanks are empty. The tanks were built so you wouldn't think that it was all gone, right? You wouldn't look for that picture. You would just take their word and blind fate, which is a fatal mistake. Much of the current controversy swirls around one isotope the treatment couldn't remove called tritium. And uh, all these years, I'm still infuriated. Every single sentence of these lies still infuriates me to no end. This is just one of the four reactors we know are completely gone. And at the top of it was two fuel pools full of decades of reactor cores that are just as volatile as the reactor cores that were in the buildings. This was a running reactor it ejected the reactor core and the fuel pools out of the building and they have and they talk about tritium is almost too hideous to bear no existing technology can treat the tritium they say the trit like the tritium signal is a very weak signal and the uranium, plutonium, americium, neutonium, strontium, the curium, which is the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rod, for instance, all of them will drown out the tritium signal. You wouldn't be able to find it. It won't register on the devices. TEPCO argues that they're running out of room to keep the wastewater, and they have to chosen to heavily dilute it. Well, like, let's say that there was nothing got out and that the only issue they had was tritium. They can drill holes or they can take existing boreholes and pour the water down that. Or they can store it for 120 years, right? So the reason that they, they framed that narrative this way is because once, you, once they got through to push any pushback, and there was none, then they can just dump it like they've been doing for 12 years and now they don't have to answer any questions. And when the tanks disappear, everybody will think everything is hunky-dory. And the reason they're saying there's only 2.2 grams that got out of the reactors, but it's all in the 1,000 tanks, and there, which is an amazing story. It's an unprecedented story. The reason they're saying that it's because they know they killed the planet and they don't want the world to understand that the nuclear industry is responsible for the death of humanity and the eight million species. And it's evident in the research expeditions that I've carried out for many years. And this is an extinction level event. And I went out on the ocean for four or five months a year, year after year after year after year, 
doing species count, they all disappeared. We had to keep going to see if they recovered, and they didn't. They completely disappeared. And the only thing's left is emaciated. There's no option for Fukushima or TEPCO but to release the water. Environmental toxicologist at the University of Plymouth in United Kingdom. So United Kingdom nuclear industry and the Australian, by the way, are disgusting, despicable subhuman species. They really are just hateful scum. These universities and their academics have clearly demonstrated they hate everything on this planet with every fiber in their body. It's unconscionable that the world sits in silence. And the University of Plymouth says the area is prone to earthquakes and tsunamis, and so they can't store it. It's prone to earthquakes and tsunamis, so they can't store it. I would give anything, and I mean anything, to take that professor down here and throw them in that building. I'd give anything. No existing technology can treat tritium in the sheer volume of water contained at Fukushima. It's an unbelievable betrayal. It's an unbelievable betrayal. He believes the same properties allow tritium to hide in the water molecules means it doesn't build up in marine life, citing environmental research by him. <laughs> Citing environmental research is research by him. I left his comment and then uh, it disappeared. So to suggest that none even got out of the buildings on tritium, uh, I can't rationalize why he should be allowed to live. I can't comprehend why someone like that shouldn't be exterminated on site. I can't comprehend it. I'm not a violent person, but they are. It's just, it's so hateful, it's so unconscionable that people can pretend that they're humans by pretending that they're also professors. Bear with me, I'll flash you through some stuff. Hopefully we'll bring some context. Because there's so many facets to nuclear. There's so many facets. I, I, I need to show you. I need to show you some of that so you can comprehend. So I know for a fact that you can rationalize what I'm telling you. And the best way for me to do is show you some documentation, right? There we go. And the problem is, 
what I'm going to show you is meant to help you comprehend the different facets the different facets of nuclear. So these, let's look at Chernobyl. We already studied Chernobyl. So this is only meant to give you an introduction to radiation and academic studies. And we're doing that in response to People like Smith claiming that tritium is the only thing that got out of buildings that don't even exist anymore and that are completely lost to inventories of a thousand fission products. But it's, it's hard. It's like, so sometimes I do this routine, what I'm going to do right now, because I want to instill into you how much knowledge they actually have about radiation. And, but it, it's, so, it's, it's so broad that the best way to do is just show you these studies that they've produced. And so when they say, based on their studies, I want you to think about all the other studies that exist. Uh, and I'm not going to go way down the rabbit hole on each of these. I just want you to, s to, to see the sheer volume of what we, we are able to quantify. Chemical method for reduction of transfer of radionuclides to farm animals in semi-natural environments. You can't reduce to transfer radionuclides to animals. The an once they're radioactive, that's the end of it. By the way, but that was that's that's a public relations firm. That's where they're trying to cover up and get you to eat radioactive food. A 2004 study of uh, plutonium 238, 239, 240. 241 americium, which decays to 241 plutonium. 90 strontium, which goes into your children's and the animals, and mammals, and insects bones and mutates their stem cells. The 137, which causes severe heart attacks around a research center near Prague. Not nuclear meltdown, but a research center. So the research centers will contaminate your communities and your drinking water and your air. Estimation of critical loads of radiocysium, which is a British, degenerate British terminology. Northwest Russia. We'll get going here in a second. Disaster factor screenings using SOS conceptual modeling simulation framework, transfer of radionuclides in animal production systems, accumulation history of radionuclides in lynching, which, you know, the reindeer eat. And you still can't eat the reindeer from Lapia because of Chernobyl, for instance. Dietary iodine intake in Ukraine, which ain't going to mitigate the radioactive fallout, by the way, but that's what they're suggesting in that study. Concentrations in reindeer and fodder plants, cesiums, epidermology of differentiated thyroid carcinomas. But when the thyroid becomes radioactive, with saturated with radioactive fission products, any gamma can go into the thyroid, not just iodine-131, by the way. But you're producing radioactive hormones for the rest of your life. And you're stacking hormones in your pituitary gland, which is a catastrophic event. And so you can invoke around 1,800 diseases and illnesses, not immune deficiencies and injuries. Cesium, plutonium, americium, and boreal forest salt transfers into wild mushrooms and berries. And wild mushrooms and berries are really nasty for bioaccumulation, particularly berries. Most people don't bother with the mushrooms, but a lot of people bother with uh, with um, with the berries. Assessing precipitation, scavenging of air pollution by using weather radar. Radioactive contamination of wild mushrooms. Cross-cultural risk perception study. 
temporal spatial trends in the distributions of cesium and surface waters of the northern European seas. Northern European seas. I'm going to play a video for you. Just bear with me. And just hang on a second. Um, of Jerry Thomas, or I'm sorry, Kathleen Hegel. When I'm when I'm trying to pull this talk together, um, not only will I sort of get a little philosophical about the about the impacts and the like, and try to put things in context, but I also want to talk a little bit about who are these radiation experts that get trotted out in events like this, or that get to participate in various. Um, activities and analysis to make pronouncements about is something safe or, or not safe. And if you look, um, you'll see organizations that are often represented, the ICRP, International Commission on Radiological Protection, Protection a premier organization. You'll see um, UNSCEAR and IRPA. So UNSCEAR is the United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation. IRPA, the International Radiation Protection Association. Uh, the IAEA and some of its folks, the International Atomic Energy Agency our own U.S. NCRP, uh, and then there are a number of other organizations. So there's PAHO, there's a Health Physics Society, there's World Health Organization. All of these will bring in, as necessary, experts to speak to you on issues related to radiation protection, radiation safety, and impacts. But if you, if you go a little deeper and you start looking at these organizations, the ICRP, for example, very well known, it's, it's been operating nearly 100 years, not quite. Main commission, 10 people. It's got five standing committees. So it's 100-ish folks. I lead one of the five committees. If you look at the United Nations Scientific Committee uh, on the Effects of Atomic Radiation that looked at the effects from, from uh, Chernobyl, from Fukushima, uh, from, from other areas, and that has about 30, roughly, countries that are represented in that group. If you start teasing through these pictures, you're going to see the same people on every one of those organizations. So the same people from ICRP are on UNSCEAR, they're in IRPA. If you look at the NCRP, again, the U.S. organization that advises the country on radiation protection issues, it's 100 people, a lot of gray-haired 100 people. And most of them are part of UNSCEAR, are part of IRPA, are part of ICRP, participate in IAEA. So the result, or the, the real world, is that there's not that many folks that really do radiation, radiation safety, radionuclide transport, dose calculations, all of this in the world. It's a pretty small club. And we wear 20 hats. Today, I put on three pens, and I could put on a whole bunch more. But Health Physics Society, ICRP, Certified Health Physicist, I've got NCRP on there, I've done IAEA. And so the point is, we're a small group, you should cherish us. <laughs> so, so how did they all know to laugh on cue? That's the National Press Club. And Kathleen Higley... Uh, her job is to stab you in the back and cut your throat and your children's throat. That's, that's her job. And the same thing with uh, Miles O'Brien, the one-armed bandit, Tepco's useless puppet, uh, Berkeley's, uh, the former head of the NRC. And I can't remember the guy on the far end by Higley. And Higley is a real-life monster, an actual real-life monster. Estimation of soil surface alpha activities, alpha contaminations. They've done studies on so many facets is what I'm trying to show you to suggest that there's, any, there's no deleterious or adverse side effects is completely uh, criminal. Behaviors of radionuclides and soil crop systems following contamination. Well, you know, they picked up 30 million one-ton bags in Japan. That was only 3% of the land. You can't decontaminate the forest. 
the only de and you can't decontaminate anything. They're just picking up a couple of inches of topsoil. And this was in the communities they wanted to repopulate, the ghost towns, I should say, and the farmland where they wanted to continue to grow food publicly. Long-term behavior, plutonium in the air, disposition, resuspension, the reliability of the human factor. In the nuclear industry, the nuclear industry is straight up evil. They're simply evil. It's eviler than any gangs on this entire planet. It's eviler by far than the military industrial complex. It's a whole different level of evil because you can't perceive it or smell it or hear it or feel it or taste it or touch it or pick it up or throw rocks at it. Sediment dating and groundwater resident time in lower basins of the river's radiochemistry and alpha ray spectrometry methods. I'm just trying to introduce you to a fraction of 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 a percent of a percent of a percent of a percent of the studies they have done just in the last decade on radiation, let alone its legacy of 80 years. Radioactivity measurements in soil samples in Republic of Russia somewhere. I guess it's Russia. Rearrangements of uh, in the thyroid tumors induced by exposure to ionizing radiation. And so they like to pretend that thyroid is the only adverse side effects. And if you don't see it in the thyroid, and then there's no adverse side effects whatsoever. And I think people like that should have their arms cut off. It's just a personal opinion. I'm not advocating it. I prefer to see it, but I'm not advocating it. Um, low dose and chronic environmental radiation. So you can't have low doses of chronic, right? Because low, low doses doesn't beget chronic. Chronic is chronic. Transfer of cesium from soil to plants. They got so many studies, it makes me angry constantly when pe I hear people say that there's no evidence or their studies don't show any adverse side effects. General summary conclusions. As an effective antidote against radio cesium burden in domestic animals. So, so they're suggesting that Cesium is the only thing, and when you hear radio cesium, that's a British United Kingdom terminology. And so they're trying to manipulate and believing that the only adverse side effects is going to be from cesium, which, to, you know, in the reality, that's the last one I'm worried about besides tritium. I'm worried about the plutonium, and I'm worried about the biggest byproduct is going to be curium isotopes. And curium isotopes, you need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium. Um, growing donor plants in radioactive soil. They've done so many studies and so many f bizarre facets of nuclear. They studied every facet you can dream up and then multiply that by several billion. Can we examine safety cultures in accidents investigation? There is no safety culture in accidents investigation. I played that clip of Higley for you earlier. That's an actual sadistic demon to be and do the things that that person, that creature actually does. A new generic submodel for radionuclide fixations and large catchments from continuous and single pulse followed as used in river models. Determination of strontium-90 in soil samples using inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry equipment with dynamite, dynamic reaction cells. So they've studied stuff that most people can't comprehend even exists. They've studied it uh, verbatim. Fission product activity ratio measured at trace levels over France 
during the Fukushima accident. Like, first off, this is not trace level we're talking about over France. This is catastrophic numbers. And even after Chernobyl, they found high levels, high levels, dangerous high levels in the Alps, in the Swiss Al or the French Alps. The, the numbers we're talking about are just terrifying. It's not unusual to hear lies, right, in the nuclear industry? Where they misrepresent nuclear fallout, for instance. So there was three, um, 450,000 times of xenon-133, but there's another study showing a million to 10 million backwells of um, cesium-137 fallout over the northern hemisphere, right? And when you see the fallout covering the planet after 20 days, that should help you comprehend it. This study was a Canadian study. Chris Sarkosis, he got $6 million uh, for downplaying this study. And what he said was 20 million particles of radioactive iodine-131 per liter fill on the U.S. was equal to 20 becquels. That's what he said. But each particle is a backwell. It's pulsing energy at the speed of light every second. And I know last night's show, Richard McCann had put that statement there. It was equal to 20 backwells. And I removed his comment for doing that. And he should know better than do that. And it's completely dishonest to write a statement like that. And it shows that all the stuff that I teach didn't sink in. All these years, that still didn't sink in. It's disappointing, Richard. And, and, and to put that in the comment section saying that that was equal to 20 backwells, that made me sick to my guts to see someone like you do that to me and do that to everybody else. I completely disrespect you for doing that. 220 million atoms per liter of iodine 129 in the rain after Fukushima. With a 15 million year half life. Xenon 133 with 450,000 times above detection levels. So you ignored that, you ignored that, you ignored that, and then you downplayed the shit out of that by doing that. Why would you come out and mention and claim that was only 20 backwards? when it's 20 million backwards. Each particle is going to pulse energy at the speed of light every second. I work like a fucking dog and people come in and do that to me. It makes me sick to my guts. Japan National Cancer Center says the number of patients rose by 865,212 in the first fucking year. And here they are out there claiming that only tritium got out of the reactors. Evolution of nuclear reactor containment in India. There is no containment for the scumbag fuel pools. Monitoring and assessment of radionuclease discharges in the Czech Republic into the rivers. It's like they've studied every facet and they lie so much. And I have to fight every fucking lie because nobody seems to be willing to tell the truth. Everybody's willing to tell a fucking lie and screw me over. And I have to work like a dog. And I don't, I don't know why I keep the comments section open anymore when people keep fucking stabbing me in the back. I work like a fucking dog for over a decade and people just come and stab me in the back. No accountability. I don't get it. Why do you fucking hate me so much? 137 seas from the Danish Walden Sea. This is in the United Kingdom. Also, you'll see the same thing. 
where the tidal flats, the salt marshes, or nuclear wastelands. Oxidation enhanced emissions of ruthidium from the nuclear fuel. Like the nuclear fuel, once it's gone through a chain reaction, is no longer is put in a fuel pool that has no containment. It's emitting everything. It's splitting atoms. The same amount of atoms it did to boil water for a million homes, those atoms are now have no containment or are released into the environment all day, every day. And they have to replace 120,000 liters a fucking day. Every day. Into the environment from a thousand fuel pools. You're being suicided worldwide. You gotta wake up. You gotta make a stand. You are Earth's last stand. This is our last gig, our last chance. You're not gonna get another chance. And I work so hard every freaking day, all day, seven days a week, after week, after month, after month, after year, after year. And I've been attacked and smeared and assaulted, and shot at, and ridiculed, and, vi and vilified, demonized. And I didn't do nothing wrong. All of that because I'm honest. And even the people I'm supposed to have fade in will stab me in the fucking back. And what choice do I got? I got no choice but to get up and go to fucking war every day. Radionuclides in grassland, heath, mire, mountain ecosystems. Notice none of these are talking about tritium. Transfer of radiocesium from soil to plant and fungi. They studied every facet of nuclear. It's, it's impossible to comprehend it for the average person. And I've been at it for years, for 10 years before Fukushima happened, and it still blows me away. There's not a single one of these that don't blow me away. Because you see all the lies, and the, and the truth is everywhere. It's right in front of everybody all the time and everybody regurgitates the lie. Remediation of contaminated area, rehabilitation of areas subjected to radioactive contamination and mobility of radionuclides. Mental distress in the rural Kazakhstani population exposed and non-exposed to radiation from the nuclear test sites. The fallout from the nuclear test sites covered the whole friggin' planet. That was the beginning of the end for the species. You can trace the decline of the species back to nuclear testing. And then from there ever after, we see the demise of the planet, the ecosystem, the population, and the species. Estimating the emissions from a nuclear accident using observations of radioactivity with dispersion models products. Radiocesium in a Danish pine forest ecosystem. In the food and total diet samples collected in selected settlements in the USSR. Assessments of the state-of-the-art model for predicting the remobilization of radionuclides following the flooding of heavily contaminated areas. Surgical therapy for the thyroid in children. Therapy for cancer of the thyroids. And so the thyroid is producing radioactive hormones, for goodness sakes. And the industry wants you to, to fixate on thyroids only. Did you see all the other studies I showed you up to this point? It's so easy for people to get distracted, so difficult for people to, to find their moral fucking compass I don't understand it. You're, everybody and the species and the planet is now under siege from perpetual radiation from the emissions for 80 years. And if you don't make your stand now, you'll never get to make your stand. And every generation that manages to survive this will hate your guts. And you have an obligation, you're obligated to do this. Absorb dosing. Evaluations, retrospective dosimetry. They studied every facet of you can't 
you just you can't keep up with it. I've always said, like, if you had a ticker tape of all the studies they'd done, you couldn't see it all in your lifetime of all the studies they'd done on nuclear. That's how much they've actually done. They studied uh, anthropogenic man-made nucleoids more than they, than they have the natural stuff from the solar system, the stardust, the fabric of humanity. Again, I, I can't possibly articulate how knowledgeable they really are, because it's, it's way past my comprehension. I've been at it for two decades, and I'm hardcore. I am a hardcore. I still can't wrap my mind around the fact that people will go out and say that there's no adverse side effects, like Kathleen Higley earlier, and the scum that were laughing at her deadly jokes. They've studied so many facets that there's zero. And like when they put potassium 40 in the equation, people like that should get the shit kicked out of them every time somebody sees them. International Atomic Energy Agency knows everything I showed you for the last decade. And they're after telling you that there's only 2.2 grams of tritium is all that got out of the four destroyed and missing buildings and eight missing fuel pools. If that's not humiliating, what exactly is, I wonder? Right, because the official story by the International Atomic Energy Agency is that the only thing that got out of here is 122 of that bit of flake there, which is 1.32 grams. You divide that by 22, you got 0 0.06. That's how much you're going to dump each year. And the buildings don't even exist. You got to learn to fucking stand up, for God's sakes. There's nothing left of reactor three, but only 0 0.062 grams is going to get out a year. And don't worry, it's all in the tanks. And then people out there actually think there's something in the tanks. They've been watching my videos for years, for fuck's sakes. This event marked 65 years of the publications that served as a global reference for the National Nuclear Regulatory Authorities help protect people and environment. Like, the International Atomic Energy Agency is the degenerate United Nations. They're one and the same. UNSCLEAR is the exact same as the degenerate United Nations, which is a military industrial complex, 195 militaries. <coughs> They're the last people that is going to protect you. They're the very, 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 very last people on the planet. Well, that, that, that's not even correct. There's zero possible way abilities that are going to protect you is the best way to say it. It's zero. There's zilch. Their job is to fuck you over. That's their job. Multilingual publications enable countries to make the International Atomic Energy Agency safety standards the cornerstone of global nuclear safety.
multilingual publications. They got, they're brainwashing the entire planet with multilingual propaganda. And like, if you go back through the whole history, which is what this piece of shit author is claiming, right from the International Atomic Energy Agency themselves, And you can see the two authors up there, the two degenerate scum of the earth, the two monsters, actual real life monsters, these people actually are. And they know they are. They got no illusions. They're like the Kathleen Higley I showed you earlier. They're painfully aware how evil they actually are. They got the job because they're evil scum. Because they'll cut your throat on a drop of a hat. Public authorities avoided details that may trigger alarm or panic. Sound familiar? They don't want to go there. Radiation experts terrifying how the eco, the Pacific ecosystems collapsed. Plutonium and uranium spreading through the food chain, not tritium, like the International Atomic Degenerate Agency is claiming. It's not brain rotting toxins, it's radioactive fallout. Die-offs have skyrocketed. It's the worst year we've ever seen. Mass deaths of sea lions, dolphins, birds spreading. Fish leaking pus covered in lesions deformed along the U.S. West Coast. Nearly all the fish caught are affected. Never seen anything like it. Some had pus all over their body. So many are showing illnesses, environmental conditions could be a factor. It's perpetual radioactive fallout. Mysterious cancers. Mysterious cancers. Mysterious cancers. Mysterious cancers. Mysterious cancers. Mysterious cancers. New York Times contributor confirms California rainwater 181 times above drinking water standards for radioactive fallout. And they're only acknowledging the iodine 131, which is absurd betrayal. Because it's got to be 10 times more 132, 30 times more 133, 31 times more iodine 129, just in that isotope only. Spent nuclear fuel catches fire, worse than a meltdown. It's equal to 10 or 12 meltdowns. Because that's how many reactor cores are in the fuel pools. Once you catch fire, that's the end of it. It's all gone, not too long. Within 12 hours later, it's, everything is gone. Massive die-off reported in the Pacific Ocean. That's 2017 in March. I was on the ocean at that time, by the way. They're going off my reports. No fish out there anywhere over a very large area. Where's the food? Total failure in reproduction. Nothing we've ever observed before. It's an extinction event. New York Times, eerie fog of silence around the Fukushima plant the first surprising thing is there's no sound in the no-go zone. Animals are starving as the food chain continues to collapse. Mass starvation event plagues the West Coast. Record high numbers of deaths in Hawaii. Carcasses scattered throughout the islands. Sick and starving animals, a mystery. It's not a mystery if you're honest. North America won't be safe from Fukushima. Animals suddenly died on the west coast right after Fukushima. And the whole world noticed a strange phenomenon. Fatally high levels of radioactive material entering the ocean. And it's ongoing. Dead animals litter California beaches. Alarming phenomenon. 
graveyard of washed up sea life, influx of malnourished sea creatures. We're really starting to worry. The animals are starving to death, covered in sores, stunted growth, weak immune systems. Everything we're hearing is emblematic of a nuclear meltdowns, radioactive fallout. But Japan's meltdowns are unlike anything we've ever seen. Each of the reactors that melted down in Japan, there's four of them, and eight fuel pools at the top of each building, and two fuel pools. But just the reactor itself is worse than all nuclear meltdowns in history combined. There's around 10 fuel pools at the top of each building, for fuck's sakes. There's four buildings, for goodness sakes. Your silence is doodly noted. West Coast bird die off as big as ever recorded. Stomach's completely empty, staggering, alarming, unheard of, never seen anything like it, unprecedented in size, scope, duration. And a host of other freakish phenomenons. Historical crisis along the U.S. West Coast we're facing a fishery disaster, a very never seen before thing. Extinction threat of salmon, loss of sardines, the squid, the sea urchins, the kelp, the, the sunflower starfish. But it, it was worse than that. This, this, is, this is an extinction event. This is a real life extinction event. I've done the research year after year after year from Vancouver, British Columbia to Alaska, and now we're in the Atlantic. And what we've seen year after year after year was no recovery, and the species to your left are exterminated. You'll never see the species to your left again, and that's because of perpetual radioactive fallout from Japan. This was a pulse event that destroyed, was the, was the strata broke humanity and the eight million species backs. You're talking about an event never seen before. You're talking about an amount of radiation that is unheard of in scope and size. And that species to your left are now exterminated. That's exterminated. The species to your right, there's nothing on the beach there's supposed to be 700 algae, for goodness sakes, 84 species like this, and each species comes in multiple vibrant colors. You shouldn't be able to go to a beach because of all the sea urchins would poke holes in my zodiacs. There's incredible diversity of shellfish, of, of clams and razorback and little necks and manilas and gooey ducks and uh, abalone and... and um, and uh, periwinkles, which are like big snails. There was just this incredible, wonderful, stunning. There should have been 80 species of starfish, and each species comes in multiple vibrant colors, all kinds of coral. There was all kinds of sponges, around 74 species of sponges. Like, was it worth losing all the species to your left? And then they're out there calling nuclear carbon free because it kills everything with carbon, which is all life on the planet. They're growing food. Food was banned by 55 countries and 14 prefectures. What part about that is it that doesn't upset you? Why isn't the world fighting back? Why are so many people out there spreading fucking lies? And they got no one to pick on. They got me fucking barbarized. They got nobody else to fucking pick on. They got me tortured, literally tortured, because they all got to justify their fucking jobs. And they can't do it because they got no one to pick on. They already dominated the entire planet, and the only one that's really hanging on, that's running an educational program on top of that is, is someone stupid like me, 
I literally must be the stupidest person on the entire fucking planet to think that I can win this battle. And how do I, how do I not do what I'm doing? It's hopeless, I get that. I don't need anybody to fucking tell me that, okay? I know how hope it, hopeless this, this is. Lord knows I knows how hopeless it is. And I, I can't do, I cannot do the right thing. Because there's so many out there that can, the world deserves at least somebody that's honest. They're growing food right alongside a one-ton bags of radiation. Just that, just that one picture. How do you get that evil? That you put that the government promotes something like that. The nuclear industry vehemently promote something like that. How the fuck did we ever lose our way? How did we become so disconnected that we think this is a way forward by pretending this didn't happen? Guys, I guarantee you it's not. The most colossal fuck up humanity has ever made is to pretend that this didn't happen. Let's see everybody on the next show. Shout out to Stephen Young. Donated 50. Thank you, Stephen. Hugs, my friend. You see everybody on the next show. Have a great night. I know the fuck I won't. I'll be back tomorrow night, though, wallowing in this excrement that the industry has piled on our fucking shoulders. They deserve me anyway. <laughs>